will uh, go to today's class. Part 2 of thinking. Tomorrow I'll try to upload it on the YouTube. I want to do some editing here and there and then I'll upload. Today I tried but I could not edit. I don't have a video cut out. Okay. Okay. You are literally what you think. Your character being the sum total of your thoughts. You are literally what you think. Your character being the sum total of your thoughts. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Prob uh, uh, Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. You are literally what you think. Okay? Your character being the complete sum total of your thoughts. That means if a man is good character, his mind and his thoughts are filled with good things. Okay? Numbers chapter 13 and verse 33. Numbers chapter 13 verse 33. We won't discuss a lot about this. We'll just read this scripture. Numbers chapter 13. Let's read from verse 13. Let's just read it. Okay, Numbers chapter 13 verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. So there is a dichotomy in two different kinds of people here, right? They are seeing the same picture, they are in the same environment, they have been raised up in the same culture, in the same situation. Caleb and Joshua, both of them were raised up as slaves, right? So they were no different from the rest of the people. But the way they look at it is because of what they are thinking in their mind, okay? One is looking at the place and, and they are saying, it's a great place. We can take it right now. Let's go. Okay? That's what Caleb is saying. Caleb says, let us go up at once and take possession. Okay? For we are well able to overcome it. But, right? The verse 31 starts with a but. So there is a difference over here. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go against these people. So, is two different sentences. One is saying we are able. Okay. The other is saying we are <coughs> not able. So what 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 is making them think differently? One is depending on the God that is sending them. One is depending on their own. Always remember, you cannot do God's work in your own strength. You will always have challenges. You will always have hurdles. You will always have um, rough times. Right? But you have to always depend on the God that is sending you. Okay? So that's that's how you think. One, you know, uh, recently Pastor shared this uh, this example. Um, you know, there was a man who was sent to a certain place, and uh, they they didn't wear any shoes over there, right? So one person went over there and he observed everybody's feet, and he said, you know, this is not a good place to do business. They they had a shoe business, and uh, uh, nobody wears shoes over here. So this is a very bad place to do business. And the guy that was with him, he sent a telegram and he said, nobody wears shoes here, this is a great place to do business. Yes. So it's, you're looking at the same thing and one says we can do it, another says yeah. it's impossible. So everything depends on your, uh, uh, your incubator which is your mind, right? A place where your thoughts are being incubated. Okay? 
But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go against these people, for they are stronger than we are. But these guys were saying, The God that we serve is stronger than everybody. <laughs> so, <clears throat> how far you go in life depends on how big you think, right? Let's continue. Let's finish this and then we'll go back to the notes. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we had gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. So <clears throat> these guys were about six feet, nine inches to seven feet plus. One set of people were saying, if we take these houses, the doors will be big, the roofs will be big, the plates will be big, the beds will be big, the clothes will be big, everything they wear will be big, come let's take it. The other guys were saying, they are too big, they are going to kill us. See, look, look how big giant, big bed, right? Big giant, big doors, big giant, big houses. So everything depends on, on how you think, whether you're going to take it or whether it is impossible for you, okay? And God, and the Bible says it's a bad report. It's a bad report. So if any one of us is saying we can't do it, guess what? It's a bad report. It's a bad report. Because you're saying we cannot do it. Instead of saying Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who is so everything depends on, on what's, what you are meditating in your mind. What your mind is being renewed of. Okay? Then we saw the giants, the descendants of Enoch they, uh, came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight. You can preach a message on this. You are literally what you think. So guess what happened? None of them made it to the promised land. The promised land was for them. <coughs> but none of them made it to the promised land because they looked at themselves, they looked at their abilities and they said, we can't do it. Two guys said, hey, you got a big God. He told Moses, there is a land going to be inhabited by all the ites. And God will empower us and we will surely get there. So tonight, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Nothing will be given to you on a platter. You have to fight for things in life. You have to fight for your right. But what about Jesus? Yes, Jesus finished the work at the cross and he gave us the legal document in our hands, right? But now in that house are illegal occupants. So you have to take the document of Jesus and that's what prayer is. That's what speaking in tongues is. You have to take the document and you have to kick the devil out of that place. You have to kick Spirits. There are spirits that are dominating where you run. We run our services. There are there are spirits that are that are in the spiritual realm that will you know try to discourage people from coming. So it's a spiritual battle. He has won it two thousand years ago. But what he wants us to empty that place and take. Jesus is not going to come and take over. He wants us to possess it. Okay. So it's how you think. You are literally what you think. As a plant springs from the seeds. So when I look at a plant, I know that there is a seed that was planted first for that plant to come out. Okay? As a plant springs from the seeds, so also every act that you do in life springs forth from either good thoughts or bad thoughts. So we are comparing our mind now to a garden. Okay? As a plant springs forth from the seeds, so also every act, everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we plan, springs forth from the hidden seeds of your thoughts. So, you can either speak and then think. Or you can think and then speak. Speak. Okay? Think. 
what you're thinking tonight. Where success is concerned, where success is concerned, people are not measured in inches or pounds or college degrees or family backgrounds. They are measured by their size of thinking. This is what David Squad said. For example, take Sachin Tendulkar. He's such a short man, right? But you give the bat in his hand, he's a different personality, right? You give the bat in his hand, he's a different personality. So, success has nothing to do with how you think, uh, sorry, how you look, what your height is, what your weight is, what your college degrees are, what your family background is. They are simply measured by the size of your thinking. So somewhere, this short fellow, he has overcome the, um, the fear that a bowler can hit me with the ball. Because he realized that the bat that is in his hand is way bigger than the ball that is coming towards him. Right? So it's not your height, it's not your weight, it's not how you look, it's not your family background. It's how you are, how you are thinking about the whole situation. Whether I'm going to back off or I'm going to fight back, I'm going to win. He's one of the richest guys in India now. Right? And he's earned a lot of money just by a piece of wood. Piece of wood piece of wood. He's become a millionaire by a piece of wood. Isn't that interesting? How can I develop this kind of thinking? As a Christian, we need to meditate on the word of God. Meditation is the best medication. Meditate on the promises of God towards you. Meditate on the success principles. Okay, you meditate on the promises of God. You meditate on the success principles. You meditate on taking the lives in the word on failures and how they became successful. Guys like David, Joseph, Daniel. Peter in the New Testament, Paul, right? You take those and you meditate it, okay? What did I say, point number one? You, you meditate on the promises of God. Point number two? The principles of success. And then you take life stories of people. See, when you go to a court of law, the advocate will always take previous cases. He will say in so-and-so date in 1975, this is the the verdict that was given by the judge, and this was a similar case. See, why is he saying that? He's saying that because cases can be similar, right? And they can take one case and one judgment given by a judge and they can apply it to the same thing. Same with the word of God. See, when you begin to meditate and you begin to look at those lives, you can say, Lord, if you've done it for him, you will do it for me. What are the principles? What are the steps that I need to take? What are the choices that I need to make? Okay? Meditation. Meditation is way better than meditation. Meditation is divine medication. Meditation is divine medication. Meditation is the key to transformation. Meditation is the key to transformation. Okay? Meditation is the key to transformation. Meditation is the dictation you give to your spirit and you keep speaking those words. You, you anytime heard of a mother giving dictation to her son or daughter? I, I, I do it every morning, you know, I, I hear. So, she says, what's the spelling of this and what's 
So it's you take the word and you dictate to your own spirit. Dictation is not just telling spellings. It's the word dictating your spirit. Right? It's taking over. Meditation is the, the, the dictation or the direction. You take the word and give it to your spirit now. So if you tell yourself, CAT is bad, CAT is bad, CAT is bad, CAT is bad, you keep on doing it. After some time, CAT is bad for you, right? So you that's what meditation is. You can even take a wrong thing and help it to help it to change. See, see that's why some people think is uh, it's okay to abuse someone. They think that it's okay to steal or it's okay to take bribe because it just did not happen overnight. It happened with with allowing those things to dictate them. Okay, so I said meditation is medication to the spirit. Meditation is uh, dictation. Meditation has to do with thinking, right? Meditation now has to do with thinking. So you think, you take something and think. Point number two, how can you develop effective thinking? It is to give yourself, it is to give yourself or commit yourself to grow and learn. It is to commit yourself. See, nothing happens by commitment. See, today my, my wife was, she was calling some of you and she said, this is so crazy to call our leaders. If you commit yourself to come here on Tuesday, we don't need to call you. You know this is a learning place. You know this is where you'll come and learn, you'll come and meet with each other. It's, if we are still calling you, that means I have not grown first and you have not grown. You must know that Tuesday is a day, 7 o'clock, we are all here together for an hour or so and then we are gone. If there is any change, a message will be given saying we don't have the meeting. But if you don't receive the message, we don't have the meeting, that means we will have the meeting by default. <coughs> so you give yourself intention, you give yourself, you give yourself uh, on purpose, right? You desire and you yearn to learn. That's a good one. You yearn to learn. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. The day you stop learning, you know, I observe, I, I observe, and I was observing when Praveen was speaking, not many of you were hearing him. That's your foolishness. Because you always think that a pastor must stand here and speak. Friend, I'm telling you, I've learned so much from so many of you. I've learned something from Chandu today. I've le I've, I learned from my wife. I learned from my children. Why? Because we always have a set my mind and we say, okay, if that person is not there, we are not going to learn anything. No, no. Even if a donkey stands behind the pulpit, if you have a heart, God will teach you something. Amen. So, my question to you is, what's the, what's, the dif what's the difference between a wise man and a foolish man? That's right. A foolish man will not even learn from the wisdom of a wise. Yes. But the wise man will learn even from the mistakes of a fool. Yes. That's why the, the, there's a proverb that says, you know, I was walking outside the house of a, a house of a, a certain man and I saw that the wall was broken and I saw that the 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 bushes had come out and all the weeds had come out and I took a peep inside and you know what the Bible says? It says that I received instruction. Mm. He was receiving instruction from the folly of a fool. That's a wise man. So, don't lose an opportunity to learn. You know what? I can take his message, his message, her message, her message, sit down, develop my own message and people will say, wow, that's a copyright. <laughs> that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Never lose an opportunity to learn because every person God appoints to stand and say something has a word from the Lord has a word from the Lord. Isn't that right? 
Every one of you here has a word from the Lord. So you sum up all this. You, there's a lot of wisdom in this room. If I got everyone to speak and I sat quietly writing down notes there. For the next 3-4 months I don't have to prepare. I'll have enough information in my mind. Right? The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. Be a lifelong learner. I've seen people stand up from the church and walk away when they, uh, they don't have the preacher that they're desiring for that Sunday. How foolish is that? You've come from such a long distance just to walk away and go, where are you going to go? My question to them is, where are you going to go? Sit down for the next 20 minutes and half an hour and listen, you will receive a word from the Lord. You will receive a word from the Lord. But you should have that desire and intention to learn. Okay? How can I develop my thinking? By desiring to learn. Be a lifelong learner. I told you, not every one of us is intelligent. But when I pick other people's brains, you know, I can see something on YouTube and talk as if I invented it myself. <laughs> Nobody will know. Nobody will know. So, if you are learning and you are receiving, even though you are not a great thinker, when you speak, people will think, wow, he's a great thinker. Because you have gathered enough information. Okay? Be a lifelong learner. People who have a desire to learn, people who have a desire to learn, they do certain things. What is it? They visit new places. Okay? They visit new places. They read new books. Meet new people. Okay? Meet new people. New people. Meet new people. Who are intelligent. Right? And wise. Learn new skills. Learn new skills. It's very interesting. The Bible records of this hundreds of years back. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Visit new places, read new books, meet new people, learn new skills. James chapter 1. Let's go there. James chapter 1. Okay. Verse 19. Can we read it together? So then, my beloved brethren, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Slow to wrath does not just mean anger, it means slow to react. Slow to react. So many people are quick to speak and quick to react. Wait, let him finish his sentence. He may mean something else. Right? Don't react fast. Okay? So, be quick to hear and slow to slow to speak. Especially when you have somebody who <coughs> has more wisdom than you. Sometimes when I go visiting, I don't know whether I am visiting them or they are visiting me. <laughs> That's true. And one day what I did, the auntie was speaking and speaking, I was hearing and hearing. When, I, when it is time to leave, I took some money and blessed the auntie. <laughs> I did that. It's true. I did that. I blessed the auntie. Because I felt that I have been visited. <laughs> and I told that person who took me, I said, next time, please don't bring me to such a house. Because I want to give something to somebody. Right? It's good to hear. But if somebody is speaking for an hour and you are listening and you are drinking water and drinking water. So, whenever you sit or you are in touch with somebody who you think is much wiser than you. Ask good questions. Ask them for, pick on their brains. Anna, if this was the thing, what would you have done? What is the choice you would have taken? How did you do this in your ministry? Take that opportunity to learn something from him. Okay? So be slow to speak and uh, quick to hear. That's a good one for women's day. Okay? <laughs> To learn is actually an attitude we have to develop. 
So what's the opposite of that attitude? The attitude of I want to learn. What is the opposite? I know it all. I know it all. I have a t-shirt which says I am the I am, I, I am the walking encyclopedia. I know it all, right? So the opposite of being quick to learn or to develop an attitude of learning is saying I know it all. The day you say I know it all, you actually start dying in your life. That means you are of no use to the universe. Okay? You give yourself to learning and growing. That's how you expand your thinking. Just like any other muscle in the body, even your brain can be expanded. Not physically, but mentally. Just like any other organ in your body, your brain and your thinking faculty can also be expanded. If the eye has a, what's it called, periphery, huh? you, you know, I'm looking here, but I can also see. If the eye can look straight and even look to the left and right, just imagine what the brain can do. Just imagine what the brain can do. That's how effective and how strong your brain is. That's why ladies can do four or five works at once. Right? Because they're working, they're working from the, it's actually working from the periphery. And if somebody says, I don't have time, that means they are simply foolish. They are working on this, but they also have time to learn this and this also. Okay? So that's our next point. How do I develop my thinking? Learn with discipline. So the first one is, learn, learn to grow and give yourself to growth. And the second one is, discipline yourself. Because the flesh will always tell you to relax. You know, like Chandu was saying, uh, listen to the word. I was highly um, uh, motivated when Bishop Tudor Bismarck came last time. And somebody referred to me that message. I don't know the title of that message. Uh, what was Lim that? Breaking limitations. Breaking limitations. Please hear that message. Awesome. Just simply awesome. Breaking limitations. It's about an hour. And that's when I began to, began to think. You know, I drive to office every day. It takes me about 45 minutes in uh, ordinary traffic. If it's thick, it's about an hour. Okay? Coming back home is around 35 minutes to 40 minutes. So if I calculate my going to office and coming back, it's around 90 minutes. So seven and a half hours every week I'm sitting in a car. Right? Practically I have five working days in the office. Right? So that's five into seven. That's 35 hours I can give myself to learning with discipline. Songs are good, like you said, but at the end of the day, they don't teach me anything. So my Bible college is my car. I download messages, I hear messages, I download audio books. You can even download audio books, right? You can, you can listen to a whole book. It's like a seven hour message and you break it two to two, two hours and you can listen to a whole book one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Within a week, you've actually finished a book. Just sitting, driving and listening and enjoying. Okay? So you have five working office days to hear and learn. So I calculated it's about 400 hours in a year I sit in the car. Hours. 400 hours in a year. Right? You have to learn intentionally, deliberately and purposely. Four hundred hours, seven into seven into fifty-three. That's it. Seven point five into fifty-three. Even if you have uh, two two yeah. week offs, four hundred. You say fifty weeks, okay? So it's 
seven and seven and a half into fifty weeks. It's, a, it's close to four hundred. Yes. So you have four hundred hours. I have four hundred hours that I can give to learning instead of being stressed with the traffic. Relax. Listen to the word. Listen to the message. This morning I was hearing pastor teach on the businessman one. The last time that he did, I was so blessed. I heard it so many times, but again it was like the Holy Spirit. Speaking to me all over again. So you learn so much, okay? So you give yourself to learning by force sometimes. <coughs> you have to discipline yourself. You have to deliberately do it. Why? Because your mind is like a garden, okay? Your mind, look at your mind as a garden. Liken your mind to a garden. Okay? You can either intelligently cultivate it or allow it to run wild. <coughs> you can either intelligently cultivate it or allow to run wild. If a fool stays quiet, people will think he is wise. That's what Proverbs says. But once you open your mouth, I know what you are thinking in your mind. Once you open your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? So, you intelligently cultivate it or you allow it to run why? Think of your mind as a garden. Think of your mind as a garden that God has given you. Think of your mind as something that has been entrusted to you. Okay? If no useful seeds are put, what's going to happen? It's not just going to stay, stay barren. Right? What's going to happen? There are weeds that are going to come and that are going to grow. Weeds don't require cultivation. Weeds don't require cultivation. It is so amazing. Eh? The negative always does not require a lot of effort. Weeds don't require cultivation. Weed seeds do not require tending, but good seeds require 100% tending. Okay? So what, what thoughts are coming in your mind? Are there good, good thoughts, weed seeds? What is the thought that is coming in your mind? If no useful seeds are put, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will start reproducing automatically. So it is very important to tend the garden of your mind. It is very important to tend the garden of your mind. Weeding out the wrong thoughts and cultivating the right thoughts. The right thoughts. That is why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, renew your mind. Every day. Every day. Every second Saturday if you observe, my mother will be sitting with the pots and she will be it's de-stress for her. But you know what she's doing? She's taking off all that that leaves. Those are dried up. And she's uh, digging it all around. And she's cultivating. Because good plants require good cultivation and good tending all the time. All the time. You can never stop thinking good. Thinking good is the oxygen is the oxygen of your life. Thinking good is the oxygen for your, your life, your career, your future. Good gardens provide good fruits. Right? Isn't that right? Yes. Good gardens can be shown off to other people. 
It will take time. It will take discipline. But when you have a good garden, you can always, it becomes a show off for you. So what you think in your mind will show off in your life. What you think in your mind will show off in your life. Okay? Good thoughts can decorate your life. Just like a good garden can decorate your house. Am I have any questions? Okay? Let's go to Genesis 13. Genesis 13. Look how God is working on Abraham's thinking over here. Genesis 13. Genesis 13. And I'm reading from verse 14. Genesis 13. And I'm reading from verse 14. Realize. God is speaking to an 80 year old man. Okay? If you have your Bible, write it down there. God is speaking to an 80 year old man. Realize, God is speaking to an 80 year old man. What is he saying? Lift up your eyes. See, God is planting good seed in Abraham's garden. Lift up your eyes and see and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward you know great thinkers just don't think about themselves they think about the future generations to come Abraham never enjoyed the promised land he just walked through it but he was looking for his future generations he was looking for his future journey. Poor thinkers always think about, about the present. Present pleasure. That's why you have daily wage laborers. Right? You have daily wage laborers. But if you go to business, you can get the payment even after six months. Right? So, the payment is not right now. Right? The invoice or the bill is valid up till... The check is also valid, has, has a validity date, right? So, a big, a huge thinker or a large thinker or a big thinker or a good thinker is always thinking, lift up your eyes and see what he can see. He can see nothing. It's all dust and, but <coughs> God is planting good seed and he's saying, come on, look, look. And he says, for all the land which you see, I will give to you and your descendants forever. Okay? What is God doing? He is enlarging Abraham's thinking. He is enlarging Abraham's thinking. That's why he had to bring him out from his father's house. How many of you have your fathers or maybe you have left your villages and came to Hyderabad? Lift up your hands. Lift up, lift, lift it up high. Come on, look in this room, how many people are there? It's almost every one of you. If you would have stayed in your village, where would you have been today? You have come out, right? You can grow rich, you can build yourself and go back to your village and develop your village. Right? That's, that's large thinking. That's the way you think. Or you can just stay here. You know, if you talk to old people, they don't want to leave their house. Right? They don't want to leave their house because they are emotionally attached. Emotions will not take you anywhere. Emotions is the greatest destroyer of good thinking. That's why women are so attached to the house that they buy. Don't be attached to a house. It's only wall and bricks. It's an investment. That's what I told Kranti. I said, don't be... See, one day if you, if you, need, if you need to disperse it and buy a better one, do it. Do it. See, don't, don't be just... Just emotionally attached because there's always something better. good and better. Okay? What is God doing here? He's enlarging Abraham's thinking. Big thinking can benefit any person in any profession.
So don't limit your business only to samosas. Think big. Write, write, write your vision down. Keep your vision. You know, the other day I was visiting brother, uh, brother Shalom. He has a flair for ministry. But they have been into business for years. So when I visited him, I asked him a question. I said, are you a pastor or a businessman? You tell me that. If you are a pastor, come and serve in the church. If you are a businessman, do business. Do hardcore business. Do business like a businessman. Don't do business thinking like a pastor. Do business like a Jew and God will anoint you. And I said, you write down your vision, you write down and bring it to me on Sunday. My duty is to pray for you. My job as a priest is to pray for you. The same with you. You are a businessman that has a flair for ministry. Same with you. Right? Same with you. There are so many, so many people over here. Right? So, today you decide whether it's going to be 80-20, 25-75, 50-50, it can, it can be different callings, right? Is it 60-40? Same with you, right? Many of you are into business, but you also have a great flair and desire for, for God and for the ministry and for the kingdom. So, expand your thinking. Expand your thinking. Realize that you are serving a God that can bring you a boat sinking, net breaking, fish miracle in a matter of seconds. Isn't that right? Think, think like that. You're not. You're, so when you give your boat and you you serve God, He can give you a like that brother who gave a seed and got five lakhs. How many of us will work for a whole year for five lakhs? Think about that. It was done in a minute. So enlarge your thinking. Okay, just 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 for business, sister, come. Nila, no, don't. So, what do I do? I vouch for excellence. Okay? Daniel 6.3 I'll finish in 5 minutes. Don't worry. I saw this watch and I said, finish the watch. I know many of you are looking at it. <laughs> Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 So who was Daniel? He was a leader Right? He was a leader And the satraps And all of them They said he has an excellent spirit It's interesting In the NIV It does not say excellent spirit It says exceptional qualities Who has an NIV here? Now Daniel NIV, yeah It says exceptional qualities Right? In the, in the KJV it says excellent spirit. In the NIV it says exceptional. So what could tell me one exceptional quality? I believe it was good thinking. Isn't that right? He was a great thinker. He was a dreamer. He was a dream interpreter. Right? He was a man of the mind. He was an administrator. In the living Bibles the same word says great ability. In the New American Standard Bible, it says extraordinary spirit. Amazing, huh? It's one Hebrew word. See, that's why a Hebrew word is juiced, right? It's full of juice. So it's it's not just it's not just one one word. So if you understand Hebrew, it's got a lot of lot of connotation to it. That's why you need to read several versions. In the Good News Bible, it says he was an outstanding man. Amazing, huh? What makes you an outstanding person? Suppose there are all good for nothing people gathered in this room who are talking rubbish. What is an outstanding man? I go and stand outside. That's true. Because I don't want to meditate on what you are. He was an outstanding man. Okay? 
the contemporary english bible says he was so much better than the rest wow so it's one word excellent spirit exceptional qualities great ability extraordinary spirit outstanding so much better and the kjv says he had an excellent spirit lord is god so why this thinking why why the pressure on your mind to be a good leader the pressure on your mind to be a good leader is because you must excel in everything that you do see if i if i if i come here and the pulpit is like this does it make any difference so you come and you are one of the helpers but still i feel it is out of alignment because it is that's excellence it makes you an exceptional person not many will notice but some will notice this right straight that's why if you have to judge a person look at his shoes look at his shoes look at the way, way he he keeps his beard you know even if he has a beard look look at the way he keeps his mustache look at the way he keeps his clothes right excellence do you desire for such qualities exceptional qualities great ability extraordinary spirit outstanding so much better do you desire for such qualities excellence my spiritual father says is not expensive excellence is not expensive so everything now is related to your thinking okay large mindedness right to think outside the box and uh, excellence excellence is not perfection it is attention to detail is not perfection nothing is perfect in the world except jesus excellence is not perfection it is just attention to detail attention to detail okay i'll give you a very good example hold on it is doing best with the resources you have it is doing best with the resources you have so if you just have one pant one shirt one shoe one tie excellence is not decorating yourself or borrowing money to buy another shirt buy another pant is keeping that shirt that pant that shoe in good shape okay excellence is not expensive i'll give you a simple example and then we will close i came to your house and i said uh, sister i'm feeling thirsty so you went inside got a big bottle okay now you tell me is that excellence no no i'll give you options you give me a bottle some give me 1.5 liter bottle <laughs> but that's true some 2 liter bottles <laughs> second you can put it in a steel glass and give me <coughs> right <coughs> third you can put it in a glass tumbler and give me okay fourth you can put it in a glass tumbler and bring it on a tray right. yeah. see look at the excellence here but i don't have a glass tumbler what about a steel tumbler in a steel tray or a steel plate right with a 
cover on top of it and not your fingers in that glass. <laughs> Just a simple example, okay? Before you even bought this bottle and gave it to me, did you ask me, sir, do you want cold water or Did you find out whether they are comfortable drinking your home water or they feel safe drinking packaged drinking water? How much does it cost to get a packaged drinking water? It will be another issue if you bring a packaged drinking bottle, open it, you know, neatly and put it in a glass in a tray and bring. It's the same water, no fuss. I can bring it in a bottle, but what makes the difference is the excellence. <coughs> what do you say, sir? A simple example, okay? So you give the bottle, do you put it in a steel glass? Did you wipe that glass? No, some people serve food in a plate and the plate is not, is not wiped. Right? You still have that. It's still your boring water is there in there. Did you wipe that plate with a tissue and then serve the food? Okay? Did you? Okay. So you give the bottle or you put it in a steel glass or you bring a glass tumbler or you bring a glass tumbler with a tray. Did you ask cold water or not? Did you find out whether they feel comfortable drinking home water or feel safe drinking packaged drinking water? As a pastor, people serve us all sorts of things. And they think we can consume everything. That's why pastors go to be with Jesus sooner than the congregation. That is not my portion. Amen. 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 So, excellence is very cheap, actually. It's simple. Excellence is not the state of flawlessness. The glass can be a little chipped off. I understand. Right? I understand you've done your best. I understand you don't have a fridge in your house, right? But you've done your best to do what you could. It's not the state of flawlessness. It is being and doing the best you can. Did you do your best as a leader this week for your life group to go? Did I do my best to prepare today and give you the best notes? Did I do it? I have to ask myself. I don't need to compare with anybody. I have to compare with myself. Okay? It is not the state of flawlessness. It is being or doing the best you can. Right? And giving you a hundred percent. And giving you a hundred percent. Excellence needs help sometimes. So I may not be able to do it all by myself. For example, let's take another example. I may not have a steel tumbler in my house, but my neighbor may have. But my neighbor may have. Somebody I know in the apartment may have. So I go and say, sir, today uh, a guest is coming. Can you please give me whatever it is, right? So excellence needs help sometimes. And don't feel ashamed to ask help. So maybe this, this podium is there and you don't know how to clean it, right? You've been given that job. It's no problem to ask this brother, Anna, how do I clean it? Do I use a cloth or do I use a paper? So he says, no, no, for a glass object, you always have to use a paper. A newspaper is good. Newspaper is not expensive, it is cheap. Two rupees newspaper. You can clean and polish this and make it look good. Isn't that right? Okay. Why excellence? Because we are the children of an excellent God. We are the children of an excellent God. 
everything goes back to your food. Okay? We owe our best to God because He has given us His best. He continues to give us His best. Good morning. Yes, sir. Praise God.